This meeting is being recorded. All right, we are good to go. Okay, so um, being 630 on Wednesday, January 4th, 2023, and have a quorum. I'll open the Bridgewater Planning Board meeting for this evening. Uh, first item is call to order. Uh, second item agenda is a public hearing. Before we go to the public hearing, I'll read the town manager's instructions real quick. So pursuant to the town manager's order, um, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, and imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Bridgewater Planning Board will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. No one person attendance of the members, of, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access proceedings in real time. This meeting is being recorded within 48 hours. We'll post a link and the recording on the town's website and or social media pages. The following members of the Bridgewater Planning Board are participating remotely. I'm Patrick Fiscal, the chair, uh, Mr. Raymond Ajemian, um, Mr. Michael McDonald, the vice chair, Mr. Stephen Geller, and Mr. Ted Haley, the associate member. Now, during this meeting, all votes of the board will be taken as roll call votes. The following Bridgewater Town staff will be participating remotely. Stan O'Brien, the uh, Town of Bridgewater Planner, um, Mr. Greg Tansy, the Town Engineer, and Mr. Stephen Salari, the Building Inspector. At this time, everyone's mic is unmuted. It is muted, excuse me. The board's mic should be unmuted to the whole meeting. And as the items appear on the agenda, the project's representative's mic should be unmuted. If the project is a public hearing and allows for public comment, we ask that you use the chat feature to ask your question by listing your name and your address and your question. The host will recognize the questions in order. You can also use the raise my hand feature in the participant menu and be unmuted when the host recognizes you. Again, before speaking, please state your name and address before asking a question. If you're on the phone, you can now slide to raise your hands. hands. So the first uh, item in item two is a public hearing, 210 Broad Street. This is 210 Broad Street Realty LLC. This site plan a special permit. This is continued from August 3rd, August 17th, September 7th, September 19th. October 19th, November 2nd, November 16th, and December 6th. Um, before we move forward, Mr. O'Brien, would you like uh, the applicant to request a, a um, removal of the special permit here? Um, I, I, think the, I think the applicant should um, kind of provide an explanation. And I think then we can go to down the road of kind of ex explain the, the non-necessity of the special permit um, at this time, but um, I know the applicant and the owner are here, and I think that they can uh, better represent the situation. Um, so at this point, Mr. Brian, I'd like to turn it over to the applicant, and we can have them make their presentation. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, my name is Eric Dias. I'm a registered professional engineer with Strong Point Engineering uh, with an office in West Bridgewater. I'm also a resident of Bridgewater. Uh, with me tonight is Janesh Patel, representing the owner um, of the project. Um, again, just a quick refresher, this is 210 Broad Street. It's the Napa Auto Parts building, or the former Napa Auto Parts building, right across from the Roach Brothers Plaza. Um, <clears throat> we've, as you read, um, we've been continued a number of times, but we've been before the board probably three times now, I believe. I, I think this is our fourth. Um, and we've hashed out the details of the site plan pretty well. Um, the last time we were here, I think we were generally comfortable with the site itself, um, but we were seeking some, a special permit to allow off-site parking at the GO gas station. And I think that was the sticking point um, more than anything for two reasons. One, I think the board wasn't entirely comfortable with the mechanism to ensure that that parking arrangement would remain in perpetuity. And two, I think the pedestrian travel pathway from the GO gas station to the Napa Auto Parts uh, building left some concerns for the board. So since that time, we've been working, well, we've done a couple of things. The, as you know, the town zoning bylaws have changed in the, in turn, the parking requirements have changed. 
So we've updated our plan to reflect the current parking requirements. And I'll bring up the plan in just a moment and walk you through the changes that we made. The other thing that we did was we reconfigured the internal layout of the building so that we could, it would correspond with the amount of parking that we have available on the site. So we, that allows us, as you alluded to before with Mr. O'Brien, to drop the request for the special permit. Um, so I'm going to bring up my, my screen very quickly just to show you folks what we did. Um, and hopefully everybody can see the site plan. Can everybody see that? Okay. So the site plan, the only changes we've made to the site plan is where this parking space is shown now, we formerly had a landscape area here. We got rid of that landscape area. We added one parking space here. We added one parallel parking space here that's gonna be designated as used by employees only. We also, this is an overhead garage door in the existing condition. We added a double door and I'll show you why on the architectural plan. And we've added a two yard rollout dumpster, but we've enclosed it with some screening that would be suitable to the town. Probably a small fence uh, that's screened or something like that. This would roll out to be picked up at certain hours and then put back in its place. Um, with regard to the, uh, the layout of the building itself, I'm going to bring up this plan because I think this shows it the best. So as it stood previously, we had two retail units in the front of the building. Those remain. If you recall in this area before we had a print shop set up basically that had a separate parking requirement for it. And this back wing over here, it was a personal training studio. We got rid of those two things. So the way that it's going to work out now is we'll come into the main vestibule. You'll go either right or you'll go left into one of two retail spaces. Everything else that's shown here in white is either a hallway, a bathroom, or a storage area. The blue area that you see here coming off the double man door, these are going to be offices for the owner of the building himself. Um, and that's all that's going to happen here. When we do the math, that requires us to have, I believe it's 12 parking spaces um, by Shane's memo that he produced. And we are proposing to have 13 with one designated right here as employee parking only, which would more than likely be used by the owner to access this office. Um, so I believe, I'm hopeful, that that satisfies what the board's major concerns was about this. By being able to drop out the special permit, I think it simplifies things a little bit. We're self-contained and we're just uh, gonna focus on this property and nothing more. Mr. Dias, just looking at that plan, can I ask a question? Of course. So at, at, our, at our last meeting, um, I think, um, Mr. Gellin wasn't here, but he made some good comments about traffic and, and vehicles potentially ending up on Broad Street. I see the plan is still showing or uh, showing a Cape Cod berm. At the last meeting, didn't we talk about that all being a concrete berm, or vertical granite berm, precast concrete, a vertical granite, so that there, so that so you could easily roll up that onto Broad Street and drive over that lawn and uh, you know. Uh, now that you're saying that, that is ringing true. I believe the CCB is just a, um, a detail on the plan that didn't get changed. Uh, we could certainly, if the board was comfortable, condition that that be a vertical granite curb through there. Um, so yeah, I, just, I just think that, you know, Mr. Gallon made a good point before you were showing sure. um, the, the stops and with, with the Cape Cod berm behind it. And then we talked about the, you know, those. Those 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 stops potentially ending up on the street or on the sidewalk, and then we talked about just the Cape Cod berm of that monolithic berm not having enough, you know, uh, you know, it just it's just not it just rolls up to. But I think I think if we could do that vertical green, we could you know we could always condition that. But I think that's kind of how we ended up. Uh, just a question for you, Mr. Chairman. Um, certainly, the main concern is along the front here, and I don't think we have a problem doing vertical granite here. Would we be allowed to stay with the concrete curb on the siding or the uh, the Cape Cod berm on the sides, or would you prefer vertical granite all throughout? I mean, I think vertical granite looks better. I mean, it's up to the board. I think I think we definitely want it in that front and that corner area. So, but it's I mean, that's a board decision. Okay. 
I mean, I, I, my preference is I think that Mr. Geller wasn't here and he made some comments. I thought that was a great comment and it's just, it's a busy area. Um, the Cape Cod Road is easily driven over and, and just to try to contain the traffic and, and keep everybody safe, I think it's the best, the best option. Sure. No, and I, now that you mentioned this, I, I do remember that conversation and I apologize. It's just, uh, it should probably, it should mm -hmm. probably be around that island when they come in too, just extend it around that island and, and then, and then, and then the line that you show right there, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. That's not a problem. No, nope, we can make that happen. I shouldn't speak for Mr. Geller, but Steve, that's kind of what you were getting at, correct? When you made that comment? Yeah, Mr. Chair, if I may, that, that is a comment that I made. I, I also made a comment about putting some type of vertical barrier around all the plant areas because just cutting out the con just cutting out the existing asphalt, cars, plows, they will drive over that. Mm -hmm. Um I, I'd also ask where and I can I know that you did the loom and the seed that that divides the two areas. Um, we all know that's that's just going to get run over by tractor trailers going back and forth out back and everything else. If there was something else we could do with that area to divide it, I, I think you're just wasting money by cutting out that little strip of concrete because unless you're going to plan on putting irrigation out there, I don't think your loom and seed is going to last. Well, I think a, a couple of things that we might be able to do in that regard is we could curve it just like we're curving the rest of the parking lot. Um, or we could even throw some bollards there, a small roll of, row of bollards in between the two in the loam and seed area. So that way, cars I, is a good I'd, I'd rather see. I'd rather see curbing than a row of bollards. I mean, if you're going to put a roll of bollards up, you might as well just put a guardrail up. You know, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. So. Understood. Mr. Gallo, you good? Mm -hmm. uh, with, with, with that, with that portion, yes. So, yeah. So I'll just I'll open it up to board comments at this point and questions. So go ahead, Mr. Gallo, if you have more. So uh, an, another comment I have is is you know, and I I, I appreciate it. I know we're site plan approval, but in your in your first presentation to us, you you were planning on doing a lot of work to the building facade, mm -hmm. and I and I see you're really not doing as much work to the building facade right now to try and clean it up and make it a little bit more modern. Uh, you know, right right now the building is a metal standing seam building, very plain dull, uh, you know, warehouse type thing. Do you plan on putting panels on a large portion of the building in the back or do you plan on leaving it as is? Absolutely. We, we plan on remodeling the exterior. So in the front, it's going to have new paneling and then we're going to paint the back. And we're trying to see if we can make it so we don't even see the back portion from the front, but it's going to get a facelift. The exterior. So, so, so what you submitted in this package is not what it's going to look like? We, we, we haven't done the exterior plans yet just because we, we didn't know how long it was going to take and it's been back and forth but as soon as you know if we move forward now then i can have an arc yeah, and we the, can go the, through that process but the, 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 end initial goal architectural, is the initial architectural yep. plans i gotta tell you look better than than what was submitted in this package sure uh, especially, in, especially the in this package it goes, goes over the buildings well, i mean Sure, sure. And in this uh, package, we were trying to stick with the Benjamin Moore color palette, right? And I think our architect just picked a couple of Benjamin Moore, but ideally, we're going to try to match across the street, and we're going to try to keep it similar to whatever their palette is. And that's, I think. Yeah, no, and, and I appreciate if this was a presentation for the color palette. I, I just last, sure. the last presentation, you, you removed that whole facade that was overhanging the sidewalks it seems to be back in this presentation uh part of the part of the overhang of the facade actually kind of interferes with your handicap access in front of your handicap right. space you know so i i didn't know if your plans were to tear down that portion of the facade like you were originally the front do. we're I mean, gonna tear gonna, it down 
I mean, we're going to tear it down. It's in bad shape. It's not going to last. So it, it, it needs to be tear, torn down. Okay. I mean, I, I know that you are going to, you know, you'll have to probably bring your building envelope up to the new energy codes and everything else. So, um, all right. That, that was just a little concerning that you were keeping the building the same look of what it looks like now and just painting it. So, yeah, nope, nope. Um, so my other my other concerns were were with the granite curbing, and and I appreciate that you're going to do that, and doing something with that piece of piece of material between the two properties that just we all know isn't going to last. Um, and thank you for listening to our comments about the screening in of the dumpster and everything else. Mm -hmm. That's all I have for right now, yep. Pat. Thank you. Good comments. So just, just so I'm clear, um, Shane. So these are, and, and Mr. Patel, these are not, so the architectural we're looking at today are not going to be what the building looks like? The exterior, no, we're going to try to, we're going to stick to the Benjamin Moore color palette, which the board right. had required. But we talked, no, we these are we not the you. final. We talked about the historical palette, which which I'm fine with, and I think you comply with. But historical. But I'm talking about architecturally. I mean, as far as windows and doors and siding, is is this a an accurate representation of what it's going to look like, or is it not? Windows, doors, yes. Just the siding, no. We're not changing any windows. Uh, I mean, we're gonna get new windows, but they're going to look and feel okay. the same. The so is that, so, so just but, to clarify what Mr. Geller was asking. So I, I remember on the prior plans, it showed that the exterior skin, that that metal was going to be replaced in certain areas. The shingles were going to be replaced up front. The clapboard was going to be replaced. That's all still happening, but I'm, I'm trying to find out on these plans. Has that been removed from this set of plans? Excuse me. Excuse me. I I didn't hear that. Can you say that again one more time? Sure. I, my question is, is is what's being shown here now? The the siding mm -hmm. the, the siding the windows the skin of the building the metal skin it is going to be replaced but it's not being shown on the plan. Is that correct? Correct. The overhang is going to be gone. It, it's going to, we're going to take off the overhang. And then yeah. we're going to have to reason. So that, that, that shingled overhang. Right. That, that shingled overhang um, is, is, is not represent, representative of what it's actually going to look like, correct? Can I, can um, I, is, is it possible? Can I share my screen? Can I do that? Sure. You let me do that? I'll, I'll just make things a little easier here. Can you guys hear, can you guys hear me all right? Or am I coming in and out? I You're coming in and out sometimes. Okay. Can everybody see my screen now? Yes. So this is what you, you submitted to us now, which is essentially what the building looks like. Okay. When you came before us in August, your presentation in the front of the building looked like this. Correct. Is the building yeah. and is, so, is, when it, and the building in the end is it going to look more like this? More like this. Or is it going to look more like this? The previous one. Okay. That's what that's what that's what Mr. Driscoll and myself were getting at. It is correct. I, I really hope it's not going to look like this and you're going to get and you're going to make it a little bit more modern like this. All right, Absolutely. So, Personally, and, and, I hate, I don't like the overhang either. So that's going to go. Well, I think it interferes with your sidewalk. I think it, I think it interferes with your, with your handicap ramp. Uh, your, your sidewalk's coming down on both sides. So that's, that, that's, 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 that was one of my, my big issues of, you know, we got to mm -hmm. you sent us something that you're going to do, and then you submitted something that you want. And I, and I get it. You did it because Sorry. you want to make sure that you're moving forward and everything else. So, uh, and I can appreciate that. So, so Mr. Um, the, 
the modified plans, the updated plans that were submitted prior to this set of plans, architecturally are what we should be voting on. But the color palette chosen on the current plans are what I've actually put on the plans prior, correct? That sounds correct, yes. It's the layout, the prior layout that was shown without the overhang, but the general color palette is gonna be the historic Benjamin Moore color palette. Okay, now what about that garage door to the left? That changed as well. In the in the first rendering, which was more modern, there's still a big garage door there. Now there's a, a glass door shown. So the glass door will be in place of that now? That is correct. The garage door goes away and it ends up a double man door. Okay. So we just I, I would ask I would ask that you you match the panels of the back of the building to match so it all blends so it looks so it doesn't look like it was a garage door. Yeah, we can do that. Absolutely. Any other board questions? Just a couple of quick comments. Um, so I just, <laughs> excuse me, folks, just for clarification, the whole issue of parking at the gas station is dead, correct? It's yes. no longer the Okay. Secondly, when you showed the, uh, the picture of the drawing of the interior, you showed two offices, I believe, and a good amount of dead space. And my question is, why the dead space? Um, one of the pro pro proposed tenants is uh, going to be a UPS store. Uh, they have a good amount of storage that they need. It's not really storefront. It's not an area where retail happens. Uh, if you've ever been in a UPS store, well, there's a counter. You go in there, it is very small customer space. Then the rest of it, the back house is uh, just mostly storage. So in effect, it'll be part of one of the offices. Uh, one of the retail spaces, yes. Okay, thank you. Any other board members? Mr. O'Brien, Mr. Tanzi, and Mr. Solari. Um, so I provided an updated memo as well as a uh, draft decision up for the board. Uh, I know there's been some comments for the board in terms of changing some concrete berm to vertical granite curbing, as well as having architectural plans of matching what's actually going to be built. Um, some of the one of the other suggestions I provided, um, I caught in the site plan. Uh, I think it was page two on the most recently updated plans. It talked about. Um, a saw cut for a landscape area where that parking location is. Um, I sent it over to the applicant as that could be just updated and removed and to show that there's a uh, parking space located there. Um, additionally too, um, I know there's a par that new parking space that allows for um, the applicant to um, have 13 spaces of the required 12. Um, I would also kind of suggest that that one space uh, be kind of also used as a loading area because um, there currently isn't really a loading area um, on this plan. And I think ideally that could be a quality location for a, a landscape area. I mean, I'm sorry, a loading area. Um, other than that, I think I, uh, the applicant has provided these updated plans and um, having many discussions about parking counts and what the parking counts are. Um, you know, they no longer need that special permit uh, that would be required as uh, that special permit is only pertinent to if the applicant is looking for additional parking or requires additional parking uh, offsite. So uh, our purview is kind of stuck, not stuck, but with um, we're primarily looking through site plan review now and we ask for the applicant to also um, at some point withdraw uh, their application for a special permit as um, as it's no longer necessitated. Um, and like I said, I provided a memorandum to the board um, as well as a draft decision if the, for um, the board's consideration as uh, requested by the board many meetings ago. Just one more quick question. That's <laughs> okay. Um, lighting, has that been uh, updated at all? What, what uh, lighting do we have? Nighttime lighting here. Uh, we do have a photometric plan that I can, um, the applicant provided, I believe, in the August 
plan set about let me see if i can pull that yeah, needs a requirement uh yes you know they can't go beyond the requirement of uh lighting off site um and their lighting is totally on their property um, as required uh let me pull that up quickly but it meets the what night skies requirement yeah okay thank you so this That's is the photo photometric plan so it shows um areas that are illuminated uh, on the site as well as um, types of structures. So that would be included. Greg, in our decision for the um, the vertical granite, should should we should they should we reference the detail in our subdivision rules and regs so that we we have that spec? You know, I would so, yes. much, so much reveal and so much thickness just so it's that properly done yes absolutely i think that's an excellent idea any other comments um mr Solari, are you okay with it from a zoning standpoint mr Tanzi, um yeah uh, my, myself and shane went over the parking and the changes and yeah it we we're pretty that was pretty much the only issue on the zoning end was the parking and uh it the new uh, plan and the new uh, use uh, work out to the amount of spots. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's um, uh, the the best asset to this um, or improvement on this project is to being able to keep all the parking contained on the site itself and not have to um, walk 500 feet to um, um, meet the parking requirements. Okay, so, so Brian, how do you want to handle this? We have architectural, we have two sets of architectural plans that need to be meshed. And I think in addition to those, that meshing of those two architectural, the colors have to come from one, but we're using the rendering of the other, but the garage doors long from one to the, the other. Uh, I would say, I, I, well, the board, I think, has some options. They can request, uh, you know, that the applicant come back and provide updated architectural plans. Um, we could require, prior to the endorsement of the plans, the receipt of uh, updated architectural plans that meet um, kind of what's going to be done there from a side elevation and a front elevation standpoint. Um, you know, I, I think it could go either way. I think with the fact that we have site plan approval, there's, um, you know, we're kind of looking at the site itself, not necessarily the architectural features, but we do have some jurisdiction in terms of what's going to go there because it, it, you know, the site and the location, um, as well as how this property looks, according to abutting properties, is important to the community. Um, so. I'm fine with either way in terms of the boards. Um, I know we also have, um, we have to look for some public comment as well as this as we still have the public hearing open. So um, I'm o I'm open to both uh, methodologies. Is I just want to make sure that the board feels that uh, either or is comfortable and I'm happy to bring uh, those plans before the board um, or the applicant can provide those boards, uh, plans before the board. Um, as to provide some comfort because we don't want to get into a situation where that the the most latest plan is what's built um because ideally we want something more similar to similar architecturally to what was produced in august as mr geller referenced to um so why don't we see if there is any public comment before we go any further if there's anybody from the public that would like to speak um you can identify yourself you can raise your hand Oh, you muted yourself, Pat. Hi, so, I'm Carl, and I have no comment. Do we have any other members of the public that would like to speak? Let me check the chat. I do not see anyone in the chat, and I do not see any virtual hands raised at this time, Mr. Chair. Okay. What are the, the board's thoughts on wrapping this up tonight? 
I, I have one more, Mr. Chair, one, one more question for the applicant. Um, sure. are, are there any plans uh, for building signage or, or are you just, and I know, I know I'm hopping on the building because I just, I'd really like to see it become a really nice looking building in that, in that section of the sure. town. Um, do you plan on allowing building signage or is just the signage for your tenants going to go on your pylon sign? Uh, just signs for my tenant. Do you do you plan on it? Well, and 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 it could it could be in part of your design if you put plan on putting like a sign ban on the on the building itself. You know, I, I'm just I'm just mm -hmm. asking that question. I, I know, you know, like I said, I mm -hmm. want it to be a nice looking building, better than what it looks like now. I'm just I'd hate to see a nice building and and get a bunch of signs thrown on the front of it. That makes it sure, and, and we can, I mean, we can agree to having it non-illuminated or illuminated. No, I, 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 I understand, but, and, I don't, and I don't mean to put you on the spot. I just want, yeah, I want you to, I want you to really think about when you blend these plans together, and Mr. Driscoll, I mean, Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm going to want to, I'm fine with the site plan approval. I think it's fine. I, I think as long as we go to granite curbing and all the other curbing that we're, that we're asking for. But I'd really like to see a, a final rendered set of plans of what this building is going to look like. So that's that's a good question. Um, on the site plan, there is no freestanding sign pr proposed. Do you plan on proposing a freestanding sign in the future? There is a free. There is. There's, there's, a, there's a monument sign in the landscaping in the front. <laughs> Listen to that someone, right? the... I'll pull it up. You know, it's not in the landscape plan, it's not in the landscape plan. On uh, this plan, this is oh, all right, I see, I see, right. right. That's that's the sign I also asked that it not be sitting so far on the street so when people are pulling out, it's not blocking their, their vision of, of Route 18. So that should be a little back. Well, it, it can come as close to the zoning allows it to go. You know, as long as it's not, as long as it's not, as long as, long as it's not blocking vision of, of oncoming traffic of cars trying to pull in and out. What's the salary? How, how far off the street does that have to be? I don't have it right in front of me, Pat, but I thought it was around six feet. Um, I'll, I'll have to check. I don't have the book in front of me at the moment. Yeah, and, this and, is, and, and it can also be up on, I, I believe it's, a, I mean, it can also be up on a couple of pylons that you'd be able to see underneath it instead of a full block blocking your vision. I just don't want to picture cars coming down there and somebody trying to pull out and they'll just be responding to accidents all day long. So I, I guess I'll leave it up to the applicant. Do you, do you want us to try to muddle through this tonight or do you want to just, I mean, I think all the issues are on the table. Do you want to just clean everything up and submit it or we meet again in two weeks? Um, I would like I would like to wrap this up tonight and whatever we said I'm amendable to like it, it, they're all good suggestions. I live in East Bridgewater. I have a couple of businesses in Bridgewater. I I would like this building to look as nice as possible as well. And I don't envision any time selling this building anytime, so I want it to look very nice. And that's I mean all these suggestions and. If we wrap this up tonight, I can get my architectural plans and I can get, we can start working on the exterior rendering. Okay. I think um, if I, if I may just recap, because I think I can just help summarize a little bit with regard to the site plan, it's we're going to edge this whole parking lot with the vertical granite curving. So that could be a condition that's pretty straightforward um, with regard to the the external renderings, we want to go with the August rendering, replacing the garage door with the man doors and using the Benjamin Moore color palette is basically what we're looking for here. We want to get something that looks like that back to the board as soon as we can. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Something like that. I mean, if he decides to, if his architect really gets on boards and gets a little bit more creative with the building, I'm fine with that also. I just, I just think you're I just really think what you what was presented tonight compared to last time is just it's it's very apples and oranges and, and I just 
I'd like to see some consistency and I'd like to see a nice building. And I think that the applicant and, and, and owner is willing to do that. Yeah. So oh, the other, the other issue would be the sign, just make sure the sign is offset appropriately. Yep. And, and, um, Mr. Geller also made another comment that I jotted down that he'd like to see more glass in the area of that garage door. So it doesn't look like a garage door is filled in with one door. Is that correct, Mr. Geller? Well, I wanted to, I want either, either glass around the doors or, or the, he proposed to put panels on the building. So it should all blend that it was all the panels were there. And now those are going to be offices. So I'm assuming, are those, do, you, do you plan on those being solid doors? I mean, Solid, solid. They're going to be double doors and solid double doors, but it won't look like a garage door when we're done. But so, so you just, don't want you don't want it to look like another retail space that someone's going to walk through all the time. Correct. Right. Yep. Right. So I just I just wanted to blend in. That's all. In in his in his, in his rendering, he's just showing it flat. No lines, no no panels, no nothing. That's all. So I'll, I'll leave I'll leave I'll leave the design up to his architect. I'm not going to, you know, as much as I would want to sit and design his building, I'm not going to do that. All right. So do we want to? Does somebody want to make a recommendation on a direction this evening to either move forward or to hold up? Are you are you asking the board or staff as well? Um, I'll let me ask the board first. Sure. I'll make a recommendation. I, this. Uh, project has been with us for how many months we've it's been moved forward uh, we've uh, postponed it uh, seven or eight times we've gone over it and i think we made enormous project and the project and it's going to work looks like it's going to work but i think that we should see a final set of plans before we actually approve it so i would uh, recommend that we um, make the final decision with the new set of plans at the next meeting one, one more, one more quick question: the the packing lot up front, after all the granite work's done and everything else, I believe you're just proposing to um, patch it and seal coat the whole thing. Is that still the game plan? Will it be repaved? Uh, I believe the plan at this point is to patch, seal coat, and restripe. I don't think we're looking to repave at this point. Um, unless for some reason we structurally need to when we get out there and take a hard look at it, but I don't think that's the case. Is that noted on the plan? Is that it, it's it's noted ex existing pavement to remain and be seal coated and restriped? Okay, that's I just want, that's how it was before. I just want to make sure that was still there. Okay. <laughs> Any other suggestions? I, we have heard from Mr. Jeremy and staff. What are your thoughts? I'm 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 happy with Mr. Jemian's uh, recommendation. Um, you know, I think our decision, as well as kind of crafting in the draft decision I presented to the board, um, it does reference exhibits, and one of the exhibits is the architectural plan. So I I do believe that rather than kind of condition it based on something we may see, uh, I think the board's uh, within its purview to make their decision based on the information presented before them. Yeah, it works for me. I mean, I think we're there. We just we just need these updates all updated and then they're resubmitted, right? Can you, Mr. Patel, can you have the architectural done in two weeks and the site plan updated and everything so we can sign off if, if I should assume that's not right. If the board votes to, to endorse it. Um, sure. I, I can have that in two weeks. Uh, just to confirm, um, the meeting is in two weeks, but we would need to get all materials back to Shane's office in a week. Is that correct? Uh, I would leave that up to the board in terms of uh, their ability to review. If, if they base that review on information that's, uh, that we're talking about right now, whether it be the curbing, uh, the suggestion of the oh goodness uh, removal of that landscape area off the plan set, as well as the architectural plans. I don't see any issue that the board would need. Uh, I think as long as it's provided to the board in a reasonable manner, um, I think that's okay. Uh, 
if the board well, is. Sure, I think we asked for that the week before because if there's a technical review or something that staff has to perform, mm -hmm. I mean, we're simply just we're simply just looking for updates. So I think as long as it comes probably that Monday before the meeting, um, I think the I can forward it along to the board. So by Monday, just so we're clear, Janesh. We need to have architecturals back to them by Monday the 16th, by let's say noon time at the latest. Yeah. The 16th, yes. The 16th, correct. I mean, you can even repackage what you what you submit. You could even repackage what you submitted back in August and just update the color panel too. I mean, that's really what we're looking for. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll clean it up and we'll get it back to you. Is the board okay with this correct uh, box? Yep, sounds good to me. Mr. Geller? Yep. Mr. All right, so um, do we have adequate time in terms of the, the uh, permitting uh, expiration date? Uh, I believe through the permitting expiration date uh, through site plan oh. review. I Site plan, we we have to, we've expired a clock, right? Uh, for site plan review, there isn't a clock. It's a cl the clock uh, expires when the year is the close of the public hearing. Okay. So, so the, as long as the public hearing remains open, there is no clock, um, and that's actually just pertinent to I believe special permits. Um, and if the request is for special permitting, we would have seventy five days. But if the request is going to be withdrawn, then I think we're okay in terms of timelines. All right, and the applicant's okay with the continuation to the next meeting, just for the record? Ganesh? Yep, that's, that's okay. And maybe you could also draft a letter asking us to remove the special comment as well? I can do that, yes. In fact, I was just gonna ask uh, through the chair if Mr. O'Brien needs that, but it sounds like that's something that we should provide. Anything on the records, because I'll be talking to the board during the planner's report of how important it is to have certain records. Okay. All right. Um, so do we have a most? Is that meeting the 18th, Mr. O'Brien? That is correct, the 18th. If the board's okay with that, and we have no additional staff for board comments, um, would somebody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we move this. Uh... Excuse me. Um, to the 18, 6.30. Second. I'll second. By Mr. McDonald. Any discussion? Mr. Geller? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Jamia? Yes. Um, yes. Thank you. I, I think we're almost there, so thank you. Thank you all for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. O'Brien, uh, next up on our agenda, we have planning board minutes from 11 2 and 11 16. Yep, November meeting minutes from last year. Is the, does anybody want to discuss these? Any comments? Any motions? No, the truth. I forgot which meeting I missed. I'm not sure I can vote on one of them. I, I believe, let me pull it up quickly. It was the first meeting in December. Oh, December. Uh, no December meeting minutes on that one, Ray. But let me pull up November. I know Pat wasn't at one of the meetings. I know one of the meetings Mr. McDonald was uh, chairing. I, I think I think the law is that we can still vote on the minutes though. Right? Correct. So at the November 2nd meeting, it was Ray, Michael, uh, Stephen, and MJ. And at the 1116 meeting, we had everyone except for uh, Mr. McDonald. 
Thank you. Right. Do we have to listen to set the minutes of 11.2 and 11.16? I'll make a motion. Do we have a second? Second. By Mr. By Mr. Geller? We have a discussion? Mr. McDonald? Mr. McDonald? Yes. I just think. Yes. Yep. Mr. Geller? Yes. Mr. Jimmy? Yes. And yes. Um, board committee and final reports, Mr. O'Brien? Sure thing. So we got a busy meeting, I guess, in January. Um, we will have a new site plan review before us. Uh, that would be the Project at Zero Jasmine Way, also known as One Jasmine Way. Um, I forward around the materials to you guys, um, but I also do have hard copies. If anyone is interested, I can mail that over to you guys. Um, so that, did, you, you know, did, you say, did you say you sent the materials to Jasmine Way? Uh, yeah, I sent them in PDF format, yes. I sent him um, early last year, didn't I? Or did I just send it over to? I don't have it. I don't. I don't recall seeing it either. <laughs> Let me. That's all right. Just want to get a chance to sit around. That's all. Sure. No, I'll um. I may have just sent that over to you. All right, um, yeah, I'll get that to you guys ASAP. Um, I'll send it to you guys tomorrow um, for you guys' review. Or as well, I can mail that uh, packets over if anyone would like a physical copy. Um, so there's Zero Jasmine Way. Um, as well as we've uh, received information from the town attorney that we uh, he's looking to go into executive session um, at the next meeting to discuss a potential lawsuit or pending lawsuit um, of the planning board. Um, so I'm going to see if we can open up the next meeting by going into executive session. Um, if that's fine, I'll post that item on the agenda. And I believe we have the subdivision rules and regulations as well on the next meeting. I sent around a red line draft of that recently, um, as well as I'll have to provide some updates uh, based on the conversation I had with the engineering department. Um, and one, a couple more things. Uh, we do have a new director of planning and economic, uh, community and economic development coming on board. Uh, Bob Ruley will be starting next Monday. Uh, he will be, I guess, attending some of the board meetings. I haven't had really a sit down, but we've had some discussions about potential matters before the board, but we're going to kind of ease him into the situations, but he'll appear before a couple uh, planning board meetings in the near future and kind of familiarize himself um, with that matters. Um, and additionally, uh, I don't think we, I said at the last meeting, I didn't have the knowledge. Uh, I did pass my, I don't think I let anybody on the board know, but I did pass my American Institution of for Certification of Planners. So I'm AICP certified, which is, I guess, the, the certification for the planner. So if you've been seeing that in my signature, it's the little acronym that makes myself feel important and fancy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's all about, the, at this point in the game, it's all about the acronyms. <laughs> It's all about all the things. So I've been, I've been handwriting next to my business cards because I don't want to pay for new ones. Um, but that's what I got in my planners report. If uh, anyone else has any questions, comments, or uh, Shane, Shane, you've always been important in our eyes, whether you get. Oh, I appreciate it. Congratulations, Shane. Thank <laughs> you. Congratulations. Now I have YouTube wow. proof. Congrats, Shane. Thank you. Good work. I think, I, I think it's great. I think it's important. Every time we tried to hire a planner in town, I always was hoping that we had AICP certification. And I don't think we've had it since the first planner we worked with, which was Greg Geeman. So I, I think it's great. So congratulations. Thank you. So I'll have to keep up with the credits because it's not a forever thing. Uh, you know, I got to attend those classes and stuff. So um, keep you guys posted as well as other classes. I think it, just a healthy reminder if you guys wanted to take any um, uh, CPTC 
training classes. I know in March they have their conference. I think they're restarting up at Holy Cross St. Patrick's Day weekend, which they typically have it. Um, I'll keep you guys in the loop if you want to um, are interested in attending or if they're holding it um, as well. Um, but it's an all-day thing. You learn about planning stuff, all a bunch of board members are around. So I'll keep you in the loop um, on the time and date of those. So I just also wanted to mention we have uh, I received an email that I forwarded to Shane. Uh, and I can ask the town clerk to send it to us, but there is there is a link, I believe. There's a number of us. I think I'm one of them that have expired in terms of their um, ethics training. Or what do we call it? Conflict of interest? Shane? Yeah. So Shane, yes. I, don't know, I, don't know if, I don't know if you can track. I know at one point we talked about it and you probably sent the link and I apologize, but I, if, we, if we could get that over to everybody and if we have time to take it take it and if you haven't if you haven't been sworn in and you've been reappointed a newly appointed um Marilee has has reached out to it to, to us about that as well so yeah i'll check i'll um i'll find the file um i remember when i started here human resources sent me over something so um i'll i'll, I'll bring up that link and resend it around thank you no problem if there's no more discussion, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. I'm second. 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 Any discussion? Mr. Geller? No. Yes. Mr. Jemian? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. And I'm a yes. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.